Hello YouTube and Khan Academy. I am about to be doing a tutorial on my object-oriented snake game. So let's just take a look at that real quick. Um, snake is a very old game and this is just my take on that game done using JavaScript and processing.js on Khan Academy. And um, so I wanted to talk first about the Apple's images that you saw. And I left a link here in the program. Well, actually, this, uh, this text right here is actually auto-generated by this program. Um, so let's take a look at that program. And that is how that program is how this uh, text and this code right here all of this was generated by another program and then pasted into here. So if you read this comment, this is where you can click on nuts, drag them around, blah, blah, blah. I'll just show you instead of reading. You can read it on your own. So go over here and left click somewhere. And then left click again. And then right click on one of these and you can move them around. Left click hold down the left mouse button and move it around. So here's an RGB color selector. It's modeled after the one that you get in Khan Academy if you were to try and color a shape. This little color selector pops up and there's this whole range of colors. I just very closely studied this and then attempted to reproduce it. So if you click on the select color button, you can drag and drag this around. Unfortunately, I didn't make it so you can click and then it would like jump. That might be a nice new feature. Uh, I actually got a lot of stuff I want to do to this program, but only have so much time. So you select a color and you can also fine tune the color out here in the shape drawing mode. So maybe if I wanted to make a game with some crazy purpley blob thing, this button right here just connects that knot to that knot so that you'll have an outline going all the way around. See right here, there's a black outline. And if I was to try and take the code right now, <clears throat> And you just uh, you push a key, and then the console pops up with all of the code you need to reproduce your shape. And then you can go to a new program and test it out. <clears throat> so this is where I drew the apples. And you can make compound shapes. You can click the New Shape button and add in... Oh, by the way, once you click New Shape, it automatically uh, made that last connection so there's an outline going all the way around. Let me finish my sentence I started a minute ago. Copy the code from the console, get rid of this. If anybody knows what the heck that is, feel free to tell me. <laughs> that X A A A A A it just comes from the console. It's not you don't see it in here anywhere, but when you select here and hit control A and control C to select all and copy, you'll get that extra little annoying bit that I always just delete upon getting it out of there. So as I've said like three or four times, I made an apple just by artistically drawing it and it was a compound shape. So I had like a stem going off and you can color the two different shapes different colors. <clears throat> so maybe this is my crazy green shape blobs, blob shapes head. Um, and one thing that you don't have to worry about too much is like you can make some really convoluted shape here and have like, like 2,000 vertices and that will slow down your uh, program's runtime if it takes 2,000 lines before it gets into all this other stuff. But your program can probably do that really quickly. 
what you don't want is to, in the middle of the draw loop, have to go through 2,000 lines of code and just and your program's just sitting there in the background just like trying to draw this shape. Uh, for efficiency reasons, when I created this program, I uh, included the little bit of code down here that gets the image. Um, and it's not very well fine-tuned. So um, what I like to do after I draw a shape is to come over here. And do this so I can see the outline of the shape that I drew. So if you look in um, my code here for the snake game, the apples get uh, parameters are actually quite modified from what my random custom shape generator spits out. This 100, 150. Like I shrunk it down so that it would get like a smaller region that just barely wrapped the edges of my apple shape. Because when I first put the apples into the code, they were small because there was a lot of wasted space around the git image. And if you don't know what I'm talking about here, go to Google, type in processing.js git. And that will give you a reference on this function, because Khan Academy uses processing.js. So we have documentation down here, but I actually haven't looked in a while, but I don't think that they have Git in here. It's not an extensive documentation. It doesn't cover everything. And there are some things that you have access to on the processing.js website, but there's also things on the processing.js website the they say are included in the language but you come to Khan Academy and you try it and implement them and they don't work because Khan Academy disabled certain things for inexplicable reasons to me for example I'm trying to work on some 3d game and um, like four months ago it worked fine and I came back and now there's a glitch in Khan Academy and my program just stopped working so that's the trade-off for having this awesome interface that Khan Academy has created. Um, I'm actually going to leave this video as it is right now, just having talked about how to draw the Apple images. I hope that you understand how to create an image now. And um, oh. Well, the really important thing is how do I use this? You you name uh, the the custom shape generator just spits out like IMG, and if you make like multiple images using my shape generator, then uh, you're gonna want to name them different things. But it's also good practice just to like name it something that you want to use because you're gonna need to remember that. So. Um, this is a P image object, which is the exact same thing as if I just did get image. Boy equals get image, blah, blah, blah. And then you use the image function to display whatever image you picked. <clears throat> So I can't remember exactly where I used that, probably in the Apple objects draw function. Yep. So this dot image, wherever I'm like creating Apple objects, I, oh, actually that's not even a parameter. It just puts it in right there. That's not really necessary either. It could just say Apple right here. But anyways, it's just like a P image object that you've used before, even if you didn't know what a P image object is. 
and now I will leave this tutorial as it is and come back in the next tutorial and explain some of this other code. Have a good day.